All right, hi guys. So let's start the next episode of five MCQs in five minutes. As I have told you previously as well, all these MCQs are previous year topics, and we are going to cover five important topics as well through this one. So stay tuned. Let's see the very first question about a patient who is found on the roadside in unconscious state, having pinpoint pupil. Okay, whenever you see pinpoint pupil, always think of a pontine hemorrhage, organophosphate, morphine, or phenol poisoning. Pump is the mnemonic that I always tell you. Heart rate is always lesser. Blood pressure is on the lower side. Okay. Apart from that, the question is saying he says he has a history of drug addict. Now, if it would be a farmer, this could be a very likely case of organophosphate because that is also something that can cause a decrease in the heart rate. But he is a drug addict. Which of the following drug must have he consumed, right? So, correct answer for this one is going to be your morphine, which is an opioid. On the higher doses, it is having cardiac depressant property. On the high doses, not at the therapeutic dose, it is having cardiac depressant property. At the high dose, you know. So in the drug addict, it's very very common to you know uh, include or the intake. There's the intake of high dose as well. Cocaine is a sympathomimetic, so there will be a lot of sympathetic activity. Amphetamine likewise. Haloperidol is one of the typical antipsychotics. So there will be a lot of symptoms like extra pneumonia symptom, but there will be not uh, symptoms like as mentioned here, like pinpoint pupils and all. So this is one of the uh, information that has been taken from your textbook that we have that organophosphate. Uh, sorry, opioid or morphine poisoning will be presenting with these symptoms that we have. Cocaine amphetamine is a sympathomimetic. Um, amphetamine is also having CNS stimulant property. Haloperidol is a atypical, uh, sorry, typical antipsychotics. Okay, that will be associated with the extra pneumonia symptom, hyperplaquemia, and all. Next question about a person who came to the emergency with snake bite eight hours ago. He has already been given ten vials of antivenom. Okay, so always remember that along with this, we are also revising the important topics. So you see. Opioid, organophosphate, uh, and the atropine poison. These three are always asked. Huh? So opioid, they have asked this one here. Then organophosphate and atropine, they have asked this previously as well. Here now they are asking about uh, antivenom ka uh, case hai, where a snake bite the patient is coming to you. Following is the next step if the patient doesn't recover. If the patient doesn't recover even after the antivenom, then what we are going to give, we are going to give neostigmine. Now, what is neostigmine, guys? It is one of the acetylcholine esterase inhibitor that is going to increase the acetylcholine level. And so the muscle uh, that the flaccidity will be recovered due to this one. And why we are adding atropine? What is the rationale behind adding atropine to you know mask? or to you know or inhibit to mask or to inhibit the cholinergic side effect so cholinergic side effect is very very likely because style choline is high they can cause bronchoconstriction they can even act on the heart and they can even lead to increase in the secretion as well so we have to mask all this uh, action uh, steroid anticoagulant therapy is not something that is that should be the next step next question is about a patient with a long history of congestive heart failure maintain on ejection uh, maintain ejection fraction no signs of hypervolemia comes to uh, presents to you with a long QRS wave with the cardiac wall hypertrophy. Which of the following drug is best to be started to prolong survival? So this is one of the very uh, favorite question of the examiner. Which of the following drug will increase the survival or decrease the mortality? Sometimes they word the term decrease the mortality. That is going to be the same thing, right? So digoxin has no role in decreasing the mortality. What about lisinopril? It's the ACE inhibitor. Among the drug that is decreasing the mortality, ACE inhibitor are the best drug, guys. They are the best drugs. And a furosemide is a loop diuretic. In acute scenario, we can utilize nephedipine is a calcium channel blocker. Again, have not shown any mortality-related benefit. Correct answer is B. Among the drugs that is going to decrease the mortality, I used to always tell you a lot of A followed by B and S abs, right? Like ACE inhibitor, ARBs, ACE inhibitor, ARB. Among all of them, ACE inhibitor are the best. Always remember this one. ARB, like all the sartans, like tell me sartan, low sartan, they are all ARB, endostone receptor blocker, like this, spironolactone, ARNI. What is ARNI, guys? What is ARNI? ARNI, all of you guys are aware that it is a combination of ARB and uh, secubitin, that is one of the neptrilicine inhibitor. NEP, neptrilicine <coughs> inhibitor. B stands for your beta blocker and SGLT2 inhibitor. SGLT2 inhibitor is the next one that we have. Okay. And next that we are having is hydrolazine and a combination of nitrate. They also have a mortality related benefit. Let's see the next one. A patient with hyperglycemia with positive ketone bodies. Whenever you see hyperglycemia with positive ketone body, you can always think of diabetic ketoacidosis. Very, very important. And he is presenting to you with altered sensorium. So it's already a classified case. Diabetic patient, hyperglycemia, positive ketone body. 
this is going to be a case of diabetic ketoacidosis the sugar level is so high that the blood is like a sugar syrup that is running in your veins so you have to increase the hydration and you have to control this glucose level as well so you need to give insulin so insulin and iv fluid is apart from that is the mainstay of the therapy apart from that you are also going to uh, you know correct the electrolyte imbalance if there is any this is the one that has been taken from your textbook initially fluid iv saline infusion correction of hypokalemia and iv insulin very very important and again iv sodium bicarbonate can also be required if there is requirement if there is a requirement arises okay last question ld50 stand for right so therapeutic index is equal to ld50 divided by ed50 ld50 is the dose that can produce mortality in 50% of the uh, experimental population and right? 50% animal mortality in an experiment after exposure of a drug 50% not 50 right 50% and right? so once again we have seen this one 50% effect of the drug in animal sample no death of the 50 not 50 animal if the sample size is only let's say uh, 50 then there will be 25 because it's 50% of the 50% of the experimental population 50% reduction in infection rate ld matlab a dose that can create lethality in 50% ed 50 matlab a dose that can produce therapeutic effect in uh, 50% of the uh, experimental population right? so that is your therapeutic index and the therapeutic index i always we study that if the therapeutic index is narrow we should not give that drug but if there is no other option we can give but tdm is required whenever there is a narrow therapeutic index they are unsafe kind of drug they are unsafe kind of drug and they will be required tdm therapeutic drug monitoring will be required in such condition phenytoin digoxin amino glycoside lithium immunosuppressant and tca are the example pyara dalit is the mnemonic that i always tell you for that right so with this one we are done with our five mcqs i hope you have enjoyed and please don't forget to subscribe like and share with your friends these are the few uh, link that that we have address of our social media uh, platforms uh, you can follow us here and uh, i'll see you in the next video thank you very much